for our market roundtable. Joe Santos, Matthew Elliott, and Mike Miner joining us. And Mike, as we look at corn and soybean prices, we're at three and a half to four year lows, and we're finally stimulating some good demand. But is it enough to chew through these big inning stocks that we see over two billion on corn or under two billion and five fifty on soybeans? Is it enough to move the meter? So on the corn side, I think so. We've seen really good progress. We've kept a pretty good price floor around $4. We've shown on the export market that we found destinations like Mexico with maybe a little front loading on their export business here to start off the new marketing year. On the ethanol side, we've seen pretty low stocks. We've seen decent production lately to kick off the new marketing year. So ethanol sitting in an okay place. We've seen good production lately. Now, if I look at the soybean side of things, it's a little bit different. Uh, we've got half a billion bushels of uh, soybean ending stocks to get through, headed in the wrong direction there. We haven't really stimulated any extra demand out of the soybeans yet. China hasn't come in and, and really right. made a, a scene yet. Now, they had a little bit of buying last week. They bought 50 cargo loads, but that was mostly from Brazil. So we need to start really getting them back in this market to get, a, get the soybean market excited, I think, from a demand side. And Matthew, we have uh, prices well below on corn and soybeans where they were last year at this time. Are most producers under break even at this point? Well, it certainly depends on what their yields were. They still can make profits and return uh, money for uh, you know capital investment and to uh, pay down uh, debt. And so it, it really just depends where you are in the yield and, and how yields right. are affected by the weather and so forth. What does it mean for 2025? Do you think maybe we'll see less corn acres? Well, certainly right now the market's incentivizing for more corn acres. Uh, the, the, the corn to soybean ratio is about 2.3, so 2.5 would be about neutral. So right now, uh, I think next year the market's looking to incentivize corn acres, you know, maybe three and a half million shift from soybeans to corn. Um, that certainly could be a problem, right. you know, next year for corn prices. So you certainly got to look for those opportunities this spring to try to lock in corn, but it could help on the soybean side. And Joe, the Fed has started to lower interest rates to help the general economy have a soft landing. But do you think that ag economy is going to have a soft landing? Well, interest rates, if they remain relatively high uh, relative to recent history, I think that'll continue to tighten economy, economic performance in general, including agricultural performance. Um, I should say, I think at this next meeting, there might be some folks who are disappointed who are expecting a more aggressive reduction in rates. I don't think the macroeconomic data really uh, suggests that that would be the appropriate path. So uh, for a while there, I think the sense was that rates would fall rather quickly. Uh, but the real economy has bounced back. Uh, employment data are strong. Uh, inflation data are good, but again, all of this signaling, I think, to the central bank that interest rates cannot go down as quickly as they had once anticipated. So again, that's going to tighten um, essentially costs of production, including production in agriculture. All right. Well, thanks so much for your analysis. Uh, we will have more Ag Day coming up here, College Roadshow, on the road at SDSU. Yeah!